All right, so we'll just start with a grid. And um, really, this is just going to be a mask. And then I'm going to paint uh, on top of this. Over to my uh, reference. Here we go. And uh, start with one of these cool blues, I think. And uh, in this case, I'm just going to get these all at the same time. Um, because the colors really are not that far off uh, between these images that I'm using for reference here. So I'm just blocking in the cloud layer behind everything. And this one over here has got some sky coming through. And I should also be uh, mindful of my uh, horizon lines here. Because they are all different in these images. But I'm, I kind of default to this almost mid-horizon. Uh, and so I need to be mindful of that up front. Pulling out the smudge brush here. I'm turn off sample all layers. I had that on for painting earlier. And uh, so this is useful to partly to blend, but then also I'm uh, I'm using this to actually get my my cloud shapes that I'm seeing in there. This so one reference has uh, has these nice puffy clouds, um, and I might. I might pull those out and uh, put those on a separate layer, but for now I'll just I'll work with it like this. And I really don't mind being uh, too messy at this phase because you really want to get information on the canvas, especially with this method with the um, uh, the smudge brush. It's uh. It's nice to just have a lot there to play with. Okay, so that is, I actually have my um, reference. Uh, let's see, my reference is a little bit translucent, uh, which is throwing off what I'm seeing. Move it. I've got it on the other screen here. All right, there we go. So this horizon is actually fairly low on this image. A little bit higher on the middle image. And then just about halfway on, on the far left. All right, let's see. Grab some yellow, warm, warm tones to get in there. These are all um, at sunset. Um, move that closer to orange there. And this one's a little deeper color there. And this last one's just got little bits. Here and there. I might consider using a uh, softer brush at this point. Like a lot of my brushes are pretty, um, pretty hard brushes, uh, and that's intentional. Like I, I like that style. Um, but at this phase, like I said, getting a lot of information on the canvas is a good thing. Um, and a soft brush is gonna is gonna do that in terms of you know, giving me a, a range of values to to play with, and then this hard um, smudge brush that I have 
is um, how I control the edges. And uh, I know I've shown this brush plenty of times before, but um, the gist of it is if you work very quickly with it, you get uh, really crisp edges. And if you work slowly with it, um, you get soft transitions. All right, let's see a little pops of color there. There's a reflection going on here in that image. Um, this guy will soften that up. And that's actually really just a, a really small area that has um, that light in it in my reference. There's this really interesting uh, kind of cloud mass going on. A little bit lower. Get the horizon farther down. All right, I think I will go with the soft brush now. It's funny, you know, I, I have all these brushes, but on a given day, I'll only use a handful. Um, just seems, I don't know, something feels comfortable, uh, and you know what to expect from it. And then uh, switching it up, I kind of have to be in the frame of mind to, to be like uh, a little more exploratory when I do that. Okay. I'm going to grab that color and go a little bit darker with it. And I'm just going to lasso in these, uh, these clouds because I got just a really interesting kind of formation going on there. Yeah, let's see. Here, and it kind of joins and gets lost up in this cloud up above it. All right, so I'm gonna use my soft brush and see, I might move that more in the purples. A little brighter. And then I'm just going to darken it up as it gets towards the edges. And we've got a little bleed over this orange in here in the center. Too dark. There we go. All right. And just lighten this. I usually, um, when I'm doing the sky layer, I'll try to get those, you know, your warms and cools in there, but then um, usually just hitting some gray in the transition area. Um, I don't know, it just softens everything up in a, in a really nice way. I mean, obviously you'll have contrast between your, um, your warms and cools. Um, but just grabbing a kind of a neutral gray for your transition. It's nice. And just have a look at that. Like if you look at images um, or as you're looking at uh, the sky on a, on a given day, how it, um, as it, it lightens as you go towards the horizon. Um, and I find that if I depict that with um, a certain level of, of, you know, that soft, muted tones, uh, well, it's just very pleasing. Oops. 
too much here. Yeah, and I feel like I'm really laboring over these way too much. It should be quite a bit faster than this. So we'll try to speed it up and not think too much about what I'm doing. Um, I, I definitely think there are, there are kind of different modes of painting. Uh, like when I work digitally, I tend to, or at least in the past, would work pretty quickly and not think too much about what I was doing. Like I wasn't afraid to, to make a mark, mess it up, and you know, knowing that I could just come back to that and fix it later. Um, I've done a bit more traditional work uh, recently, and this really changed my approach to things. Um, I think it slowed me down to be a little more contemplative um, and, and really consider whether or not you know the direction that I'm headed with it makes any sense. Um, and I haven't quite hit my kind of new normal of what feels right to... Uh, um, you know, to be approaching these too. On one level, I feel like, um, I feel like uh, it, when I'm working digitally, it should be fast, you know, because it, that was the way that I worked before. Um, and it should be exploratory, like that's the benefit of it. And I still think that that's true. Like I think that that's one of the real strong points of digital. It's like you don't have to live with that mark put it down, you can just undo, you know. Um, but I also think that it was really beneficial for me to, like, take a step back and um, think about mark making, you know, um, actually be intentional about what it is that I'm putting on the canvas rather than, you know, just kind of attacking it. Um, and just hoping that it worked out and then, you know, erasing it if it doesn't, you know. Um, and I, I think either way is actually legitimate. It's just, uh, I'm trying to, trying to weigh out the, the, the benefits of it and uh, see if I can keep myself from uh, plateauing uh, that way, you know, by just exploring uh, different ways of thinking when I'm working. All right, this one is pretty interesting on the edge here. I've kind of been uh, slacking on this one. Let's get some interesting things going on that I want to approach. So there's a, a reflection on the water, because this, this is one that's looking kind of directly into the sun. Um, so I'm going to paint that bright um, light and then do a lasso over it. And we'll see if that's a, an effective approach. Okay. So I'm going to get our reflections in here. And that light there. And we'll lasso. There's like a wave kind of cresting here. And then a little bit of an S, S curve there. And then we've got these waves coming in this way. And this will try to flatten, you know, obviously flatten these out as they go towards the horizon. 
Um, it might have to come in and out of this one to, to get that to feel right. Okay, now I'll select my uh, darker color, go a little darker and grayer with it, and then we'll put that in here. Let's see how we're looking with that. I think we actually need more. More of a mask to work with. And then this in here is really pretty dark. But there's there's something going on there with like a, a wave. And then we've got um some clouds and a ship here. I think I'll put the ship on a separate layer. All right, so there's my ship. Oops, new layer. I'll duplicate that guy, flip him upside down. Bring that side up. Trying to work the perspective as well. All right. Pin these guys down. Um, that's, uh, you're making a clipping mask is what that is. If you hold Alt and you click between a layer, clips it to the one below it. All right, and then so this will do, um, I'm actually gonna do like a selective, um, Blending. So you double click on the layer, you go to blend if gray, and then I'm going to pull this down. Because I want some of this light to come in through. But I'm going to have to do a second version of it that uh, is not like that. And then we'll mask this. Invert that mask. And there are some areas here I want to just keep in. So this um, main section of the uh, of the ship, I want to have that come through. And then this area right here, I want to have that come through. And then we'll do a little bit of a soft transition at the base of it. Um. Cool. Let me bring this down and back a little bit. I don't know if that's just the fisheye lens on the photo reference that I'm using. Um, but that was looking, it was making the ship look pretty large doing it that way. And so this way, I've got that blend if thing going on. I can manipulate this and move it around, and I still get that water effect. Let's see. All right. So now I can uh, lock the pixels on this guy and paint on top of it. So then that's essentially 
my mask. And I'm just going to paint these in a little differently. All the items on top of the deck are a little bit brighter than the hull. And then that'll differentiate, differentiate the, uh, the hull from these items on top, which, you know, to some extent, <clears throat> you, you might want to keep, um, you might want to simplify, you know, when you're doing something like this. But in this case, I want to show the continuity of this line here so that um, separates those two shapes. And then I can still go in and add a little bit of uh, definition uh, to these. These are like just boxes and stuff up here. And uh, we're not going to go crazy with that. We're just going to get the, the big idea that these are you know, stack boxes by... Um, Hitting it with some uh, with some shadows. Okay, just like that. Now I am gonna grab this and clean it up because I I got a little sloppy there and painted in that dark color. Whoops. Um, and so I'm gonna uh, I think I'll fade this in like. Go a little darker up top, and then let it lighten as it comes down farther. Um, that's just going to give us a little bit of bounce light off the water, and I might actually color pick some of that. Bounce it in there like that. Okay, and then behind that, I'll start painting some cloud shapes because there's some interesting stuff going on here so sorry I keep hitting the mic with my stylus my apologies for all the funky noises all right so in the cloud layer there's um, a little bit of uh, perspective that's helping us out here so that's something to consider when you're when you're painting clouds um, you know early on and even even still I have to admit that I I get into this weird headspace of um, you know painting clouds a little too linearly um, <clears throat> we have a lot of puffy clouds around here kind of like Mario clouds I actually had some friends that um, you know came to visit and saw them and were just like completely blown away they're like oh there's like there's there are really clouds like that in the world <laughs> but what it is is uh, we have like a lot of lakes little um little bodies of water ponds and stuff like that and so uh those will uh, evaporate and then you'll end up with like these um just kind of puffy clouds that that move along it's normal for uh, for some many of you out there, but um, I just thought it was interesting that we actually, you know, had some friends that had never experienced that before. So, um, so anyway, what I'm doing, you can kind of see there's a, a direction that I'm playing with with these, where I'm trying to get them to um, move across the canvas in a different different way that the ship is, and then once we get the um, uh, once we put the sun in there, uh, we'll have these kind of different different flows in the painting. So let's get this going here. So you see how these all kind of recede back to here. And um, it actually is a little stronger in the reference. Like there's like uh, some, there's a kind of a pattern going here that, it's like moving towards us. And then this one goes kind of across like that and recedes a little bit. And the thing with clouds, not that I, you know, I don't pretend to be a master of clouds, 
um, but I do enjoy painting them. Um, one thing that I've experienced with those is that you kind of have to you have to vary the edge with those, and so I, you know, I always talk about this smudge brush, but um, if you take these quick strokes, so if you've if you've blocked in your cloud structure and then you've softened a few edges, and then you just come in with this smudge brush and I just hit it quickly. You'll you get this like broken drag on the cloud, which honestly is you know it's to my knowledge how a lot of clouds end up with their you know kind of fluffy interesting look. It's like you you have this massive um, of a uh, moisture in the air, and then as it starts to break apart, like or you know hit wind or whatever, like that's kind of what you would expect is that you have these uh i hate to use the word shards but you know because it's so like fluffy or whatever but like there's these little pieces that kind of break off of the main mass and um and so anyway that's kind of how i approach it all right and you're also thinking about this um you know both technically you know like observa observation of what's there and um, graphically, so um, I'm kind of I'm playing around at this point, but at some point I'm really going to try to get these clouds to connect, and um, for lack of a better term, uh, speak to each other, relate to each other. You know, so like I was talking about how this is like one wedge triangle, and then this is like a wedge here, um, or at least I alluded to it. And uh, I think that's part of what makes um, a good uh, cloudscape is when the clouds kind of relate to each other. Like you can see that this is one uh, kind of jet stream or whatever, you know, this is one area where they're, um, you know, the uh, moisture is all coming together and then moving this way. And graphically, that makes sense. You know, like, um, it's not just the technical, like, oh, is that believable? It's also this idea of, you know, if I can get this to be like one swoop like that, you know what I'm saying? So, um, if I go, if I make that lasso there, and then I bring this in and bring this in, like this, then these relate to each other. Right, like that now becomes um, an associated shape. So you're looking for things like that. And then also, of course, um, uh, the levels, you know, how you balance your brightness is going to help you out with that. So we haven't really gotten to that yet. Um, but we're not far off that. We actually might just let me just do that now since I'm talking about it. So okay. So again, uh, I can just like I've done with the other layers, I can lock the um, opacity. So if I paint, it's not going to paint outside of these layers, and I'm going to. Shift that value and the hue a little bit. We go a little bit bluer and a little bit darker, and then kind of hit these corners and lower uh, parts of the cloud. Basically, anything that's going to be um, both in shadow from the sun here, but then also as we kind of get towards the edges of the um, canvas, we want to we want to shift those values. All right. So then, again, when, what I was talking about with associated shapes where you know this is like a a wedge of clouds that kind of point into each other we're going to do the same thing with value so the value is going to grade you know as it goes off into the distance and so now i'm going to grab a softer color in there and lighten these up as they go as they recede and sometimes you can um you can cheat it 
And what I'm going to do in that regard is I'm just going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to bump up the um, value. And uh, I might want to colorize that. I'm not. Mm, we'll get to that. We'll leave it. Uh, we'll leave it kind of light like this. So anyway, we're gonna we're gonna bump that up, and then set it behind the other layer, and that'll give us like that rim on the clouds. And in the background, I'm gonna diminish that because. Um, they're farther away, so it'd be smaller. So I'll set up a mask. And duplicate that mask to my other layer. So that's just a real quick, cheap way of getting, uh, you know, kind of the rim lights on the clouds. And then of course there are areas where um, light is not gonna penetrate, you know, on that edge. Uh, it's just, Basically, it's in shadow, um, and it's in the shadow of its own form, and so you want to grab a couple of those and knock them out. And I'm just painting in a mask if you can't uh, see what's going on there, replacing the mask of the one below it. All right, so typically, uh, this is how I would um, block some things in. I At this point, I might start doing some painting over it with, like, um, just some messy brushes, like, uh, I don't know, this might work right here. And then, um, like, this is a wave here, and so there's, like, some, uh, uh, you know, the waves are breaking on top of that. So I'm just going to grab a value here. Do a little, mm, that's probably, that'll, that'll probably be fine. And I'm just going to get in some of these breaks here. And then pin that back down so that we're not getting on the edges. A little brighter. And I might um, just just block this in and lower the opacity on it. Um, or manually paint over the color. Lowering the opacity is um, that's okay. It's an okay way to work. I mean, it's quick as far as blending things together, but... Um, color just doesn't seem to work that way you know when you're like brightening up brightening something up and then you um, you know you go like up to white basically it's just not really what's happening you know there, it's picking up other tones and in this case um, I can see in my reference that it's it's picking up skylight so it's got to have these little bit of blue in there it's picking up it's bounce light off of the um, or I would call it ambient light, um, ambient light. So light from the, um, the environment. And I'm just going to blend that in a little bit. All right. And I think it needs to be darkened up as well. Grab that. Okay. Not sure how much I like that yet. Wait. Get some uh, lasso going and then you can either delete or um, sometimes I'll just lasso and then go to my move tool and then move it. And you know, if you want to break things up and get an interesting unexpected um, effect. Sometimes we, I don't know, we get too, um, get too locked into what we are trying to force to happen. And uh, every now and then you got to introduce some tools that um, screw, up your, screw up your own workflow. All right, so the sun in this image is right about there. I don't really like it being right on the tip of the, um, the boat. And... 
I'm just going to go a little bit sloppy with this. This is a tool that I, uh, I, li I like to have this um, comb eraser. It's nice to uh, cut away at things, but then in a way that uh, allows it to still have some character. You know, it's not like a, just a square or something. All right. I'm just going to put that guy there. And um, hmm. yeah, that's probably good. Let me move it. It's got to be. It's got to stay pretty true to the reference, or uh, all this lighting is going to be off. So I think I need to move the ship because that's the part that is. Uh, That is throwing it. And the ship also needs to be a little bit um, darker, I think. All right. I think the angle was a little too extreme. But, uh, all right, so let's see. One thing I'll, I'll do once I have a, something blocked in like this I'll uh I'll come in with an overlay layer. I'll just name this overlay. I should probably start naming these layers. Alright, set that to overlay mode. Um get my brush tool and um usually just go with a soft soft round airbrush and uh I pick a tone uh, slightly above middle gray and then just a little bit of color in it and then my opposite I usually go a little bit below middle gray a little bit of color in it and generally what I do is um, do warm and warm and cool tones uh, so my dark I think I'm going to go uh, with this kind of a richer blue there and then uh, my light I think I will go um, in the uh, orange yellows and then actually a little grayer because I don't want to I don't want to bump it too much and I can come back in and add more color with this so uh, I'm just gonna transition the sky a little bit using that method right there down here and then um, swap over to my dark and so this is just a really quick way to jump between um, you know, lights and darks in balancing your uh, your image out. It's also going to add more saturation to it um, as we go. And we're just trying to just kind of get the feel for the mood of of this image. Another thing we can do um, after this step is to uh, is to go in with a color balance, and that's a real quick way to change um, change an image. Let's see. So in my reference, there's actually another cloud right here, and I might I might just paint that in. So now I'm going to go and try to get some of these pinks in there to really warm up around the sun. And of course the clouds that are catching light from the sun. I'm 
I don't want to go too crazy with that, though. Uh, I mean, it is too crazy right now, but we'll dial it back. All right. So now I'm just gradually moving closer to gray and middle gray and then painting that back in. And that's basically going to bring it back to where I had it originally. And that's going to help uh, homogenize it. I'll soften it up so that it's not too aggressive. As I nearly reach for the black. Here. Oh yeah, it's, that's too much. I'm gonna dial that back. Jump back. There we go. It does need something. Like it's too bright, I think, but I think it also needs to have this transition here from like some of this light is kind of spilling over. Um, and that would be really atmospheric. That's moisture in the air that's catching the light from the sun. Um, and that's between, you know, the, the viewer's eye and the vessel. And so that's how we're getting some of that light spillover. Okay. And at this point, I might grab my trusty uh, smudge brush. And I'm just smudging this uh, overlay layer. Now, if I, um, I think I'll bring this in so that you guys can see what I'm doing here. Um, if I set this overlay to normal, this is what's going on. Uh, I've got these kind of mids and these, you know, these warms, these blues, and then these bl dark blues down here. Um, and they're almost gray. Um, and so when you set that to overlay, the way overlay works, you know, if anyone doesn't know, is if you are painting with a value that's um, over middle gray, it's going to brighten up your, uh, it's going to brighten up the, the image that you have underneath. And then if you're painting with a value on an overlay layer that is below middle gray, then it's going to darken it. But it does have a relationship with what's there underneath it, you know, how, how deeply it'll affect it. And it also um, uh, affects the, the color transition so like if you have a if you have a really saturated so if you for example if i go um really saturated with an overlay it's it's gonna it's gonna be too strong on this but it's also kind of checking the colors underneath and uh so you've got this blue behind it and i'm hitting it with this uh orange basically and so it's going to end up in like a pink halftone instead of like a, it's not going to end up, you know, hot pink or, you know, blazing orange like over here. Um, and you can see that happening here with the, the grays behind it. So if you're going right over gray, it's going to have a pretty strong effect. If you're going over the um, same tone, like if you're going warm over warm, um, it's, it's going to just really saturate it uh, way too deeply. Um, so consider how uh, you know an overlay layer works. I, th I think these end up getting abused when people use like dodge and burn. Um, I think I think overlay is just a little bit softer um, than dodge and burn. Like it doesn't it doesn't take your um, values and uh, completely blow them up. You know, so uh, I think it's a little safer safer to work with. But even so, I w I'll still dial this back. Once I once I get it in, um, all right. And then there's like a I see there's like a little cloud. 
when you're there, so it's like picking up light. So whenever you have a cloud right in front of the sun, it's either going to obscure it, so it's going to look really dark, or it's going to be thin enough that it's just grabbing, you know, all that light is bouncing around inside the cloud and coming back out, so it just gets illuminated. Um, so, for example, this right here, I should probably transition that to, you know, bright here, and then it transitions over. I'll use a color to do that, because that's going to be a little better than white. That's a ter terrible transition. I should probably just paint this rather than trying to do it with a, an overlay layer. Anyway, I'm getting too, I'm getting too fussy with this uh, small area here um, but wanted to uh, share those techniques all right so then um, what I would do I will do I'll do a little bit of smudge to clean these up clean up the transitions on them and uh, then I'm going to dial it back a little bit See, so that's uh, without, that's with. So we've actually done, you know, we've we've changed the image quite a bit by doing that. Um, I think somewhere in there, you know, or that's still way too heavy on that on the orange. Um, and you can actually you can control this once you've once you've gone in. I mean, I did that for example, and then now I'm kind of stuck with it. But um, so I can go in, and I'm working in CMYK. Normally I use. Uh, RGB, but I've, I've been doing a lot of stuff for print lately. So anyway, I can go um, to my yellows and I can selectively uh, drop back different regions. So let's do right, yeah, right about there. And if you hold Alt, uh, you can transition. Um, you can soften the transition. Okay, and then uh, I had mentioned doing a color balance, so we'll do that really quick. So grab this, hit my uh, adjustment layers, color balance, and then you can really change the feeling of a painting uh, quite quickly just by jumping these guys around. It is beneficial to know how colors relate to each other. Um, so that, you know, if you, you're not just doing this purely for experimentation. I mean, there is an experimentation factor to it. Um, but you're, you really want to be in, in control of your image. And so you will want to know, you know, so like, obviously these are opposites on the, uh, on the color wheel. Um, but if you want to take like one particular area, so I've got like my um, warm areas are, uh, or my lighter areas are warm, and uh, there's going to be a relationship between, obviously between the, so cyan and red are on the opposite end of the spectrum, but magenta is not that far off from red, you know, that's um, kind of the next step over. And so the way that these colors relate, you can see. is going to adjust the um, the hue that I end up with there. I mean, this is maybe that's a terrible way of explaining it because it uh, should be obvious, but um, you want to be you want to be mindful of of how these relate because if you jump around from you know your highlights, your mids, your shadows, and you're not either making clear delineations or um, smooth transitions, then you're going to end up with some really wonky, uh, unnatural feeling light.
Now, what you can do with this, if you want to just like mock something up quickly, is uh, you know hit like cools in your shadows and warms in your in your brights. You know that's a real quick way to get like a complementary um, palette going on. You can also go with like a, well, I mean, do whatever you want, but you can have a uh, kind of a homogenized, what do they call it? Monochromatic, not monochromatic, uh, analogous, that's it. Analogous color scheme where they all fall on the same color range or hue range. Which is not exactly what I'm doing right now. All right. So. If you find that, um, you know, you, you like what you've come up with, but you just you can see how much this is changing the, um, the value, you can go in, you can change the blend mode to color or um, hue. You know, so if, you, if there's certain things that you want to preserve about your original... Um, you can do that. Or if you just, you know, if it's actually the value that you liked, but you um, thought your colors were fine before, then you can just do luminosity. I wouldn't necessarily recommend using color balance to do that, but part there there is a relationship between um, hue and value. So, like, you can see on the color wheel here, here as you get closer to blue, like, it's darker. It's just a, um, you know, a pure blue is going to be a darker value than a pure yellow. A pure yellow um, really can't be that dark, you know, without uh, losing its either saturation or hue. And so um, the color balance, you know, there's a preserve luminosity um, setting here, but really it's it doesn't. I mean, you can actually see that that actually makes it worse. Now, um, so what you can do is you can you can split these out. So if I want to adjust the luminosity and the um, hue and saturation separately, then I can make two of these, set one to luminosity, set the other one to color, and then um, start playing with them individually. All right. So if I want to preserve a little bit of the old color that I had, um, or if I don't really like you know, what it's doing to um, the brightness, um, you can select those individually. And I'll just label those, so this will be... Um, well, luminosity, and then this will be color, right? So, um, so yeah, if you want to, you can you can split those out. Um, and sometimes I will stack them like this. You know, I'll, I'll do one layer, and then I'll just um, duplicate it a couple times just to see what it's doing for me. And um, same thing with uh, uh, doing alternate versions. So like I did it, you know, obviously here, this is a uh, alternate palette than what I was playing with here. Um, so sometimes I'll play with these and pick and choose what, what parts I like, you know, so um, with this one, I'll just hit, um, I have a, a hotkey that'll just copy everything and move it up, uh, move it to its own layer. I think that's like, you can do control, C, control shift C and then control V, that'll do the, basically the same thing. All right, so I wish I could do that right now. So now I've got this layer that is um, all that information grouped together. And then I'll, uh, um, let's do that again. So we'll do a couple different samples here. Oops, there we go. All right. <clears throat> so this is the stack that we were working with. And then um, these are the ones that we burned out. 
right here. So I can select certain areas that I like um, just by value. So for example, like on this one, I actually like a lot about this one more than the one below it, but um, suppose we want to keep some of that gold in there. Um, and maybe some of the pink that's coming through in the clouds. <clears throat> so what we can do, we can uh, go by blend if gray. And so this is just value. So if the layer below it is lighter or darker, I can uh, choose whether or not it's, it's going to blend. And just real quick, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, check my stream and make sure where I'm gonna um, all right. check my okay. stream and it is current. Where... All right. So the this layer, I actually had a long, wrong layer selected. So I'm gonna select this layer, double click on that, and uh, blend if gray. So then the underlying layer, I can say okay, if the layer below this is above this value, don't blend. All right. So that's basically what I'm doing here. And then you you can hold Alt, which I have hotkeyed to my or uh, it's uh, one of my buttons on my stylus is uh, one of the rocker keys is Alt, and that makes it really easy to. Uh, I, I do that actually for painting um, because Alt will pick up colors, and um, when you're using the smudge brush, it's uh, it's the finger painting option. Um, but here, if you're holding Alt and then you pull this out, you can change the transition of colors. Um, so again, pull these back together. This is hard, obviously. What I'm saying, well, I shouldn't say obviously, but if you're not picking up what I'm saying, there's a hard transition here. Um, it's like a one-to-one -one pixel, you know, so you can see that. Where it's blending and where it's not. And if you hold Alt and drag it out, then it will attenuate, you know, to um, to that uh, degree of brightness. And this can be a little tricky because really, what you're looking for here is um, you're kind of you're balancing two things. You're balancing what looks um, correct to the eye, and um, you know, like. Is that the correct point to be making a transition? And then the other thing is the um, the graphic uh, appeal of it. And so, um, to me, some of these hard uh, delineated shapes are really nice. You know, because it's just really easy to see. Like, okay, that's a cloud. That's the sky. Um, but the transitions are important um, so that it, it doesn't feel completely um, faked, you know. But I think I'm going to go somewhere in here where I've got these. I'm using this just to get these little bits of color shifts. Um, and then, so I said we might want to get some of those pinks in there. We might do that with a separate uh, layer. That might actually might be a little more difficult to do. It might actually be easier just to paint it. Um, but I had to try to demonstrate this. We can see if we can do it. So, uh, yeah, so actually let's get rid of that one and this. These are dark. So what we can try to do is um, blend if, and then we instead of gray, we go to magenta. And we're going to pull that up. Oh, yeah, there we go. Not that hard. Um, and we're going to blend that in. And so basically, what this is doing is wherever there's um, that level of magenta in the underlying image, we're selecting, we're saying, okay, don't blend this layer on, on top of that color. Um, and again, with just doing a soft transition where I'm holding alt and dragging that out that's going to uh, decrease the um, opacity of those pixels because uh, it's blending 
uh, you know, from, from here to there. So that being said, I'm doing this for the sake of example, but I actually think I might have preferred it looking the other way. And we'll go with it. Whatever. Looks fine. Okay. So that's um, those are a couple tricks that I would employ to uh, to get some color going on the um, on the thumbnails. Um, there's a whole up, a bunch of other ways to approach it. Um, and honestly, like, you know, when I, when I would do this, um, when I was more in the swing of doing this quickly, um, I would be hitting that overlay layer much earlier, um, because it's adding more, um, it's adding more variation to, uh, to the tones and, and color in the scene. That being said, you can jump back and forth between those. So um, I'm looking at my reference for the middle one, and I can see that um, it's quite a bit darker and more saturated. There's there's one little layer up here in the in the sky that's a little brighter, um, but I'm just going to go for it with um, the overlay uh, brush. And we're going to increase the saturation here. Get those blues. Get that nice deeper colors here. And uh, then we'll rinse and repeat. Basically, we'll do the same thing um, that we started with, but in reverse. So we're using this to get some uh, get some value transitions, um, tonal transitions, and then uh, we'll come back with our smudge brush and um, paint right on top of that using using what we've built up. Um, I believe that's pretty straightforward. I don't know. I know that I have to explain that too much more, but if it doesn't make sense. Just follow along. It will, it will all become clear. Okay. Transition that. And go. Warm that up a little bit there. And then I want to get this nice and saturated and well, actually not super saturated in the image, but I want to get it brighter. And then these little puffs of clouds, which I had mentioned earlier, I would probably um, pull out uh, onto a new layer, which I will probably do. So what I'm going to do with that, actually, um, I'm going to try something here. It's not not something that I typically do, but um, I think it'll work. So if I hit um, my smudge brush. I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to set this to sample all layers. And um, I'm just going to hit these guys with that. And uh, I'm going to pull them around a little bit. And that should... Oops. Pump that up. That should give me my uh, layers for... Clouds, so I pull those up. Those are my clouds, right? And then I can work behind that. Oops, I need a new layer. I was doing that on my overlay layer. And um, this is what I was talking about before, where I'm um, I'm now smudging with sample all layers 
on, and that's um, that's going to use all, all the information that is below it, uh, which includes that um, overlay layer that we made. And so we're using that to um, to smudge around. That just gives us more material to work with, basically, when you're um, approaching with this method. I'm going to drag, you know, drag something around that would be useful, or transition colors. You know, and by useful, what I basically what I mean is, you've got um, you've got all these clouds that you're balancing, and so you know if you wanted to you know, pull something across here to get like a just a thin cloud in the background, you know, you've got this material in terms of uh, you know color that's already been blended or transition to uh, you know, different tones and so you can just kind of pull that up pull it over right. you don't have to paint everything meticulously you've you've got it uh, you've got something there to to work with and so uh, you know, this may seem like a, like I'm just throwing things out there, but like there, there really is a, a method to that madness. And cause I find that when I'm working, it's, um, it's much easier for me to see what could be better than to just simply plan and, uh, you know, try to make something happen. Right. So, I've had this conversation a couple times with uh, with younger artists, where they'll ask how I go from you know the you know how do I come up with ideas and you know, get the, have this idea in my head and then get that idea down onto um, onto the canvas. And the truth is that I don't usually. I don't usually have an idea. Um, I usually just start laying things down and trust the process. And then once I see it. You, you know, I mean, you just have so much experience with the world to know that something looks right or it doesn't, um, or, or it's interesting or not. And so it's, my eye much more often goes towards um, what is bothering me, what could be fixed, you know, or what, I, you know, I see that could go, okay, that would be a little more interesting if it, uh, you know, it, you know if this, for example, this is like a a flat background here so like you know, when I'm looking at that I could think okay well, I could either improve this by giving it an angle so that it's not just this horizontal band or if it is going to be the horizontal band that's going to basically show that it's way in the background and maybe it would make more sense to um, lighten it and soften it you know so that it's um, so that it recedes and it's clearly you know a background element so what I'm saying there is that um, it's easier for me to respond to something. You know, if I've got something um, just mocked out on the canvas, it's just so much easier to to like make corrections to that thing than it is to um, like make this big blueprint of where I'm headed and how it's going to work out. And you know, I think different methods are legitimate if you want to work with. Um, if you want to work with a drawing, um, and I do, I do draw and I do recommend drawing, um, but especially when I'm doing like clouds or composition, that kind of thing, I'm comfortable enough with painting that I can just jump into it. And, um, and drawing is not that different for me in, you know, in terms of, um, that idea of responding, you know, like you draw something and then there's something about that that bothers you or something that about that, that kind of implies that, you know, here's the next step, you know? Um, and sometimes you got to start over, right? Like, um, you know, just do a whole bunch of iterations on a, on a concept, but that's, uh, that's the name of the game. You know, I, I, that's, I don't know. That's how my, that's how my, uh, process has developed over time. It's just, it's easier for me to respond. 
Well, now that I've beaten that dead horse, um, that is the method to the madness. You know, you throw things down, you make some modifications with um, an overlay layer or, um, you know, this hard um, uh, smudge brush, you know, where you're kind of chopping up the image, chopping up the edges on it, getting uh, different color transitions. Um, you know, and then you respond to that. So let's go do another overlay. I think I want to brighten this up in here. Maybe too much. And I want to darken this foreground. Plop my clouds back in there. And that worked okay. We obviously we've got a couple of things to adjust on. Back to my uh, use that as a mask. Here we go. Let's see, the color needs more saturation to it. All right, I'm going to turn off the Opacity lock on that. Start giving these guys some very edge. Whoops. I still have this on sample all layers. And that's a problem. All right. Let's actually just jump to the history stack. There we go. Unlock and then turn off sample all layers. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. Not a great figure of speech when you think about it. Cooking with gas. Because, uh... It's quick, but it's not the best way. Just my opinion. All right. These guys. Adjusted. And uh, I might have to do, you know, uh, pin this layer down and um, and adjust their values, you know, so that they fade a little bit better. There's always a um, there's always a back and forth between um, you know getting things to blend uh, versus uh, delineating them. Um, or, uh, for that matter, condensing them so that they, uh, you know, you're simplifying your shapes. <clears throat> so this, to me, actually might be too, you know, too busy with these clouds. So I might, like, grab this guy and bring him off or combine him with, you know, with the other ones. Actually, those shapes are so similar. Um, yeah, my reference is not quite... I've departed too much from my reference, I think.
Okay. Now I'll start blending in some of these colors. And then behind it, I might lighten up some of this too. Herm, 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 herm. So, um, I think I will employ a uh, darker color layer. So, uh, you make a new layer, and I'll just label it out so you can see it. So, it's a darker color. I don't really like this um, transition here because in my reference, there's actually quite a bit. Um, There's not very much of that really um, warm light coming through. So I'm gonna start knocking that back. Just grab just a little bit of it to come through. What's going on there? It needs to something needs to happen there. All right, I think it's time for a color balance on this. Excuse me. I've realized that I do that, and it's super annoying in the microphone. Got the sniffles, but uh, yeah, it's annoying. All right, let's go to color balance. My shadows are definitely bluer in my uh, reference image. And so what I was talking about earlier, you know, understanding how colors work together, an example of that might be here where I maybe move away from magenta, you know, so if, even if I bump these super blue and I move into magenta, you're going to end up with a, you know, a purple tone, basically. And so and you've got to, uh, you might want to balance your blues that way. This, um, you know, if you're working in like kind of pure tones, then that kind of color in between or that color that seems kind of off to the side to it is actually going to play a big role in getting just the just the right tone on your uh, uh, on the color that you're going for so in that case like if I'm going for blue tinting it just a little bit green or magenta is going to decide like what side of blue on the color wheel it is uh, landing on Let me go back to my shadows and I actually use my um, colors to uh, darken it up. You know, I was talking about that earlier, how you can uh, use a, a color's natural uh, luminosity. Um, I mean, before I was, I was more talking about the relationship between the two. 
like how if you alter something's hue, it's you know it colors hue, then it's going to uh, it's also inherently going to alter its um, uh, value. Um, but in some cases, well, really in, in every case, as you um, as you're painting, you want to be thinking, well, how can I leverage that? You know, so that I'm not just I'm not trying to have this you know, super bright color that, you know, that's intense, but you're fighting against what it's, uh, you know, natural, um, you know, where it kind of naturally rests on the, on the value spectrum. All right, and uh, this image is almost done, um, but I actually didn't put any of the subject in there. So there's like a little aircraft carrier right here. Uh, just barely breaks the horizon. Uh -huh. There's like a command tower there. Thing with jig here. You know, radio. Watch my jig. Do hickeys. And in the image, they've pushed that straight to black. But I don't think I'm gonna do that. Every time I say that, that's a surefire way of thinking you know, he might actually do it because he said he wouldn't. And it turns out, turns out it's the right choice. Seems to happen to me more often than I really admit. There we go. And it also has a little uh, wave, you know, weak, whatever you want to call that, coming off of it. below the shadow because that would actually make sense. Um, so I'm deciding here whether or not I want that above or below the color balance layer. Um, in that case, what I typically do is both. I'll drop one below, put one above, see how the colors are blending. And that gives you a, a truer, um, you know, your white, your white, uh, you know, wake off the ship isn't really truly gonna be white, uh, unless you've got a, unless that value is actually white and you're uh, white balance on the cameras set for that uh, wake, which doesn't necessarily make any sense. Uh, like it has to, it has to fit with um, the rest of the scene, right? So if your balance is a little bit off, you know, tinted blue, then it needs to be tinted blue. Um, Part of that consideration is, um, again, what other light is in the scene. Uh, it's not, I mean, it's, it's partly the white balance, and it's partly uh, what light is, is actually bouncing off of that. Too dark. Mm. 
Let me zoom out. That's a good way to get an idea of it. It also needs to be crisped, crisped up. Yeah, so this guy, I'm actually going to spread this out a little bit. Like so. And then take this one. Um, sometimes you can you duplicate it a couple times. And then what you end up with, you merge those together, then you've you've uh, hardened up your edges. And then uh, let me come through and erase. And then you get a much crisper... Um, uh, shape going on there. Which is how I like it. Crispy. Crisp and clear. Not always. Sometimes you gotta have some ambiguity, but. Okay, that's probably good. And I, I will select that layer and darken up this uh, portion of it right there. Doop, doop. All right, now if we want, and we do, we're going to go, um, I usually do like a corrections layer at the end. I'm really spending way too much time on these, by the way. Um, but I'm talking, and I can't stop myself, so it's happening. All right, so I'm going to do like a, like a desaturated... Um, what would you call that? It's not, I mean, it's in the blue category, but it's actually going to end up looking kind of purple. Since it's in a field of so much blue, it's going to look like it's off to the side, which is what we want. So, um, what I'm doing here is, uh, is that our carrier? Yeah, we'll do that. Same thing we did before, I'm going to open up that layer, um, and then blend if, and I'm going to drop out the bright values, blend it, so that way we're just dealing with our clouds back there. And that looks a little darker than what I was aiming for. A little less saturated than what I was aiming for. That's actually kind of fun, making it even darker like that. It gives it a uh, kind of ominous, ominous vibe. I like ominous. All right. That's too much. There, so that back. It's kind of like a separate layer that's tucked up in there. And blend that guy a little bit. And this goes back to what I was talking about before, where you're, you're deciding, are you 
going to delineate these. So like this um, cloud here, like am I going to make this lighter, bring it across, and then have this transition so that, you know, this is obviously a uh, something a little closer to us. Or um, do I just take these and combine them into one shape? There's not always a right answer. Um, I would say generally simplifying is, uh, is a surefire route to go rather than um, getting too uh, caught up in all these tiny little transitions and stuff. But if you develop a skill and want to spend the time, then all those little transitions, you know, balancing a painting, um, I think is, in my opinion, that's what sets apart you know, some of the old masters from um, a lot of what we do today. And that's not to rip on anybody today. I think we have a different, um, different end goal. You know, a lot of what we're doing is production. And so, you know, whatever crosses the finish line more quickly it tends to make sense. Um, all right, so let's go in and out with that. Um, I think that needs going to crisp up some of those edges a little bit there. I mean, it had some of this same value up here, which I didn't know if I liked that or not. Let's put it back in there reluctantly. All right. Now we can adjust the intensity of that. I think somewhere in here is going to make me happy. Where these all kind of blend together, they transition a little bit. You know, there's like a little differentiation between, you know, the foreground and background there. But the sky kind of gets. Combined into one thing. I don't know. Something like that. Of course, you can do curves on these. You know, to go a little farther with them. Um, adjusting the feel of it. Uh, curves absolutely has an effect on your um, color intensity um, again going back to what I was talking about earlier with uh, colors having kind of a natural zone a value zone and so curves can uh, sometimes help to get you to get those values into the into the zones that they're uh, most saturated in, if that's what you're going for. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to figure out where I want parts to separate or combine.
course, you can also um, employ all those same methods with other adjustment layers. So like desaturation, for example, if I wanted to lower the saturation in my darks, for example, very simple, uh, just do what we've been doing all along. You make your hue um, adjustments and then you select the, uh, on the, uh, you double click on the layer and then on your blend if option, you select your zone that you want uh, to be affected. You might darken that up as well. fine tune adjustments you know so if you if you did your color balance but you didn't really like how it worked out um what's we'll doing right now we'll do a new hue saturation layer you can select by your color zones we could do our ye yellows and reds we can adjust you know what part of this zone it's selecting and sometimes when i'm working with this i'll just bump it all the way up that way i can see exactly what's being um touched by this effect Dial it back. Go back to our original. And then you might choose you want to shift the color, shift the hue. Looks like these pinks aren't really coming through down here. So I'm going to grab those as well. I think I like that. More around there. Then you can grab your any other color, blue, cyans, whatever. Again, this is useful for fine tuning. If you want to just shift that color, you know, that hue over just a little bit or your saturation, you know, this is a good method. Sometimes what I'll do with these is um, brush in uh, like the horizon. So the effect uh, you know, grades from foreground to background. This one, I think I like what this is doing except I think it's making those reds just a little bit too dark. And again, it's that natural color. I'm going to do something about that uh, pink region right there. Magenta. I think what we're actually ending up with is that 
is so bright and desaturated that we're not even really able to grab it and change it. Um, in which case, uh, we can deal with it another way. Something like this. We'll grab uh, this, set this to darker color. And paint it in there. Or um, we could select by region, so we go, or by color zone, so we go normal. And then we go blend if, and then it's only going to blend if it's above a certain level of gray. We'll find out where that sweet spot is. Looks like it's right about there. Okay. And I'll probably want that to you know, fade off as it gets farther away. Like so. All right. And then this last one. Uh, I don't know how much time I've really got in me. I'm definitely feeling my energy droop off here. Um, droop. Does energy droop? I don't know. It's like it's an old... Uh, I guess your face feels like it's drooping when you're tired. All right, let's see. Take this in, bump that up. You also got to be careful with reference images. I mean, you don't know how much this was altered in Lightroom. You know, I mean, I guess if it looks good, it looks good. But, um, you know, it does make you wonder when you're looking at it, like, okay, the sky changes drastically from, you know, this orange glow down here, and then all of a sudden it's, uh, boom, it's like teal almost. You know, um, okay, maybe not teal, but goes from warm to cool, transitioned by a cloud layer, which you know, can look kind of strange when your your eye wants to follow whatever that background, um, you know, transition is. So if the so if it's kind of like this movement from you know, this color through here. But, you know, you can follow that as one um, shape or idea behind that cloud there, you know. But if it changes on, you know, on the top side, the top side looks different than the bottom, then, uh, then your mind's going to have a little harder time making sense of that. And so I am going to have it kind of peek up a little bit through, uh, so it's not just um, it's not like a, such a harsh transition there. And then this here, I'm gonna darken this up a little bit.
I don't know, I just find this to be such an interesting uh, reference. Like these weird puffy clouds back there that transitions, like, I don't know, they've got this weird crispness to them. And I like it. That's it. That's all I got. I just like it. All right. I'm trying to get these a little more dialed in. I think these are more pinkish and maybe less saturated in there. Don't be afraid to go pink on the uh, clouds. It's just interesting transition. You know, you get your sky blue up there, and that, um, you know, those soft, desaturated uh, pinks end up um, really making it pop and feel luminous. You know, I think it's the way the light passes through the, uh, the particles in the cloud and in the air. But what do I know? All right. And I'm Departing from my reference a bit, in, in my reference image, it looks more like um, something like that. And maybe that makes more sense because I had it going really high up there and made it look like a... I mean, you can make it look massive, but then it's also going to feel like it's farther away. Or rather, uh, feel like it's closer because it's just a matter of scale. Hmm. <laughs> it's like these kind of cloud things coming in again with uh, trying to give a little bit of perspective, you know, just in the cloud layer. There's like these uh, little, what are these? Cirrus clouds, are those the flat ones? I don't remember. It's been a long time since I've studied clouds, but the flat ones. That's what I'm trying to paint in here. So they're kind of coming in like that. Maybe I'll do these on a separate layer. Like such. And you race away. I 
And then my, um, I could blur those two, maybe motion blur. Um, the layer underneath needs to get cleaned up in order for these to look. Um, nice and crisp. Whatever, good enough. <clears throat> Man, I don't know. You know, talking about weird reference image, I'm starting to believe that maybe this was uh, composited. Because it does not look right. Like, just the combination of the types of clouds. And Make no sense to me. All right, I think that's enough for that. Blend these in a little bit. And this transitions towards blue, gets a little darker as it comes up here. Let's see up here. It's a little darker. Delineate those. Start to delineate this a little more. Definitely have to get uh, <clears throat> back into the uh, efficiency. Um, you know, all this kind of hand painting. 
it's fun. It's a fun way to work, but um, there are definitely more efficient ways. Okay, that's it. Let me get that. Put this in there. A bit down here. Again, with this, you know, thinking this is a composite image, the horizon is not particularly clear on it, which makes me think that if it were composited, you know, you just kind of fudge that horizon, which is what I would do. Uh, you know, blurred a little bit. I shouldn't say, I shouldn't admit to that. I just fudge it. But um, you can get away with it a little bit, especially if it's just clouds. You know, you're just, uh, you can you can fake quite a bit with that. All right. There. Here and there. And okay. I got a shadow going on with this. There's a ship here in my reference I haven't put in yet. Probably should do that. All right, and then I'm just going to do something really quick here. Um, couple ways to go about this so you can zigzag a, uh, a layer mask or not uh, sorry a uh, lasso so you're zigzagging a lasso trying to get it tighter towards the horizon looser at the bottom and then you can move that and that uh, Probably also kind of stretch it when you do skew it so that it's not obvious that you, you know, borrowed from one part or another. Uh, that's a really quick way to get, um, you know, to break up waves like that. There's another way to do this, um, and that's a brush. Um, it may be lost in the mass of brushes I have here. Sorry for the obnoxious noise. Um, let's see, maybe it's up in... Wild brushes, patterns, foliage, texture. Specialty brushes, that's probably where it is. Yeah, water right there. And so, here's a water brush that I have made. Get that texture in there. You can also use it as a mask if you wanted to. So if I set the mask and there we go. Larger in the foreground. I believe it's set up for um, the harder you press, the more upright it is. So let me just paint this again. So if I'm going across really lightly, and then if I go hard, it you know it jumps some more so you get these kind of big broken waves. 
um, where it's coming really lightly, it's really flat. So if I were to paint in these, you know, instead of doing the lasso, paint it in with that brush. And I'll darken those up so that it comes through more clearly. And then I'll add my uh, vessel on top here. I don't know if you can hear my stomach growling. My mic does pick up a lot of stuff. But, yeah, I'm hungry. <laughs> All right, let's see. So we go up here on the control tower. And the control teller has got all these little interesting fiddly bits and bits and bobs. Tears to it. See a little thing we did right there, and then the radio tower, mast, whatever you want to call that thing. I mean, it's not a mast, right? I'm not a naval expert. I don't know these things. Okay, um, so we got that. And this is a fairly dark desaturated color. This is our ship. I'm going to fill that in. And might make some minor adjustments to it. And I um, guess we can lock the layer. Bringing in some shadow shapes in here. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's interesting when you look at something from a distance and you um, just abstract it to, all right, so you've got these light shapes, you've got these dark shapes, and you just kind of go for it, right? And then you start to look a little more closely and you realize, okay, that's, um, you know, whether it's the undercut of the ship or um, in different forms or even um, like the corner of it, right? I mean, the corner's not the right term, but like there's a long side here and then this is the back of the ship. Um, and you wouldn't really see that just from the silhouette. Um, and that's fine actually um, because at this level we're really not trying to and there's my stomach again uh, we're really not trying to get everything you know, perfect and analytically um, put together but I'm going to get the big the broad strokes of how it um, you know graphically reads on the canvas
Okay. Brighten some of this up so it doesn't clash so much. No, oh, might have been too much there. Grab some of the sky color, darken it down. Actually, I think I'll grab, like, from here. Come on over to that end. And then I'll paint this in this, this away. Like that. And lock those pixels, brighten it up, and get just that edge there. And might need a little coaxing. Okay, um, guess we'll hit it with the overlay layer, some, uh, actually this ship I'm going to just straight up darken that up. I was getting messed up because the um, CMYK is a back backwards from uh, RGB on your curves, layers, not quite the same, like that, all right, um, what was I doing, all right, do a quick color balance, and then maybe, uh,
maybe a uh, overlay layer. Let's see where we end up. All right, I'm going to make a um, different version of this where the highlights are zeroed out because I liked um, I liked where that was going before I did the highlights. Oops, easy. You can always expect the uh, <clears throat> tablet drivers to crash. All right, so I, yeah, I like that, but I like that. So, got to make a choice. I think I'll do this with um, uh, I'll get a little well I'll maybe go halfway on the, the other one and then I'll get a little more aggressive with uh, an overlay layer Let's see what that does for us. And um, thinking the way that I'm looking at this image, I might be able to uh, might be able to um, just like do some stripes across like that, and then uh, mask. Uh, you know, or blend if through the uh, carrier. Let's just give it a go. See if it works. Uh, this value down here might be dark enough to mess that up. So, we'll see though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. And then if I. Let me get some crisp edges on that down there. There we go. Okay. Oh, is this? Yeah, okay, it's all right. Just seeing how that would react to uh, the current color I have selected. And break up the top of that cloud shape. Here, I want to transition this to a, um, that might be too much. Yeah. But transition that to more of a pink there. Okay, then I need to blend all that in. Thank you. 
I think it still needs a, um, needs to kind of be unified with a, like a soft brush. Come on, guy. There we go. And, uh, too much. But we can kind of blend that up in there. Okay, I gotta work and then blend this back in. Blend that down a little bit. <clears throat> Still not quite doing it for me. Let's do a general overlay. So for anybody watching at this point, you're realizing just how much I uh, stress over and emphasize getting the colors right. Because um, really most of what this has been is just going to make sure that we're landing in the right color zones. Too much there. That yellow ochre is not helping. Knock that blue out. Don't really like it.
whole thing I think needs to be darker. On the the whole um overlay layer that is. Okay, all lightening up the scene. It's also softening it too much, I think. Hmm. I don't know, it flattens it out. I don't like it. All right. The ship in general could be darker and less saturated. So we could either do that right on the ship or adjust it. For thumbnails, I don't really care about being too clean about these things. You know, I would, um, just as quickly, you know, do an adjustment layer or something with this masked. That might be part of the problem. Is this... Which layer is it? That one. That's not helping too much. There we go. Better balance, I think. And that's not really doing much either. I'm gonna do one more color balance. What could it possibly hurt? That's a joke, actually. It could, uh, it could totally blow up in our faces. But it's Photoshop, so we can just undo it if we want to. That's the future. All right, let's see. Highlights. There really aren't very many values that are in those bright zones. Yeah, you know, true highlights. Losing my mind. Too tired. All right, there. Okay, yeah, liking that. The shadows themselves would be nice to uh, darken up.
Hmm. <laughs> well, we can try to manually push some of this out. Nope, 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 nope. It's almost there, but I just, I really don't like what it's doing to the sky. In fact, I think that old sky could be brained up. But uh, I'm really losing the the will to go on with this one. Let's see.
Yeah, I don't know. I actually just don't like this one. It's terrible. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta let it go. That might be part of it, the fact that it's centered. I don't know, I can blame everything. Am I moving into... All right. That's probably good. Good for now. All right. Well, I didn't quite get to, um, you know, compositing these ideas into a, um, you know, a, a new design. And... I think it was obvious uh, that I slowed down when I got to this last one. Took way too much time on that one. Whereas uh, these other guys, um, I think, moved along a little more quickly. And uh, I blame being tired, but um, also maybe indecisive and so forth. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, maybe learned something. Picked up a new trick. Um... Definitely would like to be farther along with these, you know, as far as thumbnails, like, um, didn't need to get as involved with these, uh, as I did. Um, but, uh, there you go. All right. I'm going to do one last ditch attempt to salvage this. And then I'm going to go to bed. It's the right thing to do. I think that the, what is this guy? Overlay? It's not helping. Um, I could crank it up and adjust it again so that it maybe has a tighter blend that might help All right, there's um, looks like probably a soft layer down here somewhere that's doing something like that. Where is this up here?
Okay, that one might be too busy. Alright, this can get blurred. Along here. Wow, what have I done? <laughs> okay, not like there. I'll soften that up a little bit. That's interesting. It really changes the, uh, the attitude of that. All right, I'm just going to call that one a loss because I don't like it. I liked where it was headed with the clouds, the um, ship itself. Um, that was uh, a little less successful. You know, I, I would have to uh, maybe come at this with fresh eyes to... Uh, figure out what it is that's really bothering me. And I'm sure the solution would present itself. But, all right, that is it for tonight. I hope you enjoyed, learned something, and learned uh, that, hey, they don't all work out. <laughs> all right, have a good night.